In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use DocuSign formula fields to calculate dates and amounts automatically. And these functionalities are very useful if you're sending contracts where you want your customers to choose a quantity and maybe calculate the total amount, or if you're sending lease agreements and you want to calculate the pro rata that's owed by a tenant. And you can also use those formula fields to validate entries. I'm going to go over all those different possibilities and how you can set them up inside of your DocuSign account in this video. So first, what can you do with DocuSign? Well, you can calculate numbers, you can calculate amounts using addition, subtraction, division, as well as multiplying the numbers. You can also round the numbers to the nearest integer number. And then you can also calculate dates. So you want to know how many days in the current month or in a specific month. And then based on that, you want to calculate a charge. You can also add days, month, years, or subtract days, months, years based on a date. And you can calculate the difference between two dates. So that's for the dates. And then you can also validate entries, which is really helpful when you want your signers to provide you with a certain information, but you want to make sure that they're not making any mistakes. And so I'm going to show you in this video how to do those three things. Starting with a very simple use case, and we're going to take this petty cash form as an example. So let's imagine that an employee has some expenses and they want to submit an expense reimbursement form. And so I'm using a template in this case. You don't have to use templates to create a formula in DocuSign, but most likely you will need that document to be a repeat document, which is why you would need to learn how to use template which is why I would recommend that you watch my video on how to create templates in the first place. Otherwise, this might be a little bit confusing for you. So in this form here, we have three sets of fields that relate to an expense that an employee has incurred and want to get reimbursed for. And then we want the employee to enter the amount for each expense. And then we want that total to be calculated automatically. So what you want to do is drag and drop a formula field from the left hand side here. And then you want to call that formula field maybe total amount, which is what I had this text field called. And then you want to rename it. So it's always super important to rename your field so that you know exactly what information the field contains. Now, what we want to do in this formula field is to add the total amount of each of those fields. And so if you look at that first field here, we have amount one, then we have amount two and amount three. So that's going to be easy enough for us to reference in a formula field. However, what we want to do is to make sure that the fields are validated with a number validation. So if we go here and, and just select none, then we won't be able to add those fields in our formula. And that's normal because a formula is only expecting a number. The other type of validation that's acceptable in a formula field is the date validation. But for now, obviously those don't relate to dates, so we're just going to leave numbers. And so here we can build our formula. And so we're simply going to click on setup and then click in this box. And then all the fields that are available to build our formula just in the drop down. And so we just need to simply click on the name of the field and then the operator, whether it's multiply, add, subtract, divide. So in this case, we just want to add the total of those three fields and then save. Now, unfortunately, if you want to test that the formula works, you need to send the envelope to yourself. If you don't want to waste your envelopes, I would recommend that you sign up for a free DocuSign developer account because it will help you create your templates and your test envelopes without having to spend money on your paid envelopes. Because remember, DocuSign only gives you a certain number of envelopes per year unless you're on an IAM plan and that gives you unlimited envelopes. So let's just say that now we are buying, I don't know, a card and that card is $100. And then this amount will update to 100. This is 200, so that would be 300. And this is 400, so that will be 700. So our formula works. Now let's try to make the formula a little bit more complex by adding a quantity field. We're gonna add three text fields, validate them with numbers. And then the last thing will be to rename them so that we can reference them easily in the formula. And so this is going to be quantity line one, two, and three. And so now it's ready so we can update the formula. Instead of just adding those numbers, 
we want to add those numbers, but we want to multiply each amount by the quantity that's related to them. So we're going to open a, a bracket and we're going to say amount one multiplied by quantity line one, close the bracket plus open the bracket and then same thing, amount two multiplied by the quantity line two and same thing for the amount line three. Close the bracket, we're going to click on save and now we're going to save and close and again we can't test using the preview so we need to send the envelope to ourselves. Now let's enter a couple of information so let's just say a card and then there was, I don't know, a photo or a whatever and so then my card was a hundred dollars, my photo was two hundred dollars and my whatever was eight hundred dollars. But my quantity here was two, so that should be 200 at least. This should be $1,000 extra, and that should be $1,600 extra. And so this is how you build formulas with very simple calculations. Now, what I want to show you are things that are a little bit more complex, where you can create formulas that will allow you to calculate ranges and validate that the entries entered by your signers actually match what you expect. So let's just take a look at how this works. And if we haven't met before, my name is Sofian Saudi. I used to be a DocuSign consultant back in 2019. And I'm actually still a DocuSign consultant, but not for DocuSign themselves, for SolidSign Consulting, an organization that I founded in 2020, where we help DocuSign users and prospective DocuSign users save time, money, and headaches. If you're spending lots of time creating documents, tracking them, chasing them, copy pasting, there's a huge, opportunity for you to save time. For example, you could at the click of a button generate a document using the data that you have stored in your CRM or in your spreadsheet and have the document sent to your signers and track the signing status directly inside of that same software so that you don't have to check your emails all the time. And once the documents are signed, they get automatically uploaded to your folders or your CRMs or wherever you want them, even renamed the way you like so you never need to look for documents buried in email chains. And if your signers are entering information in the form fields, like it was the case in this document here, you can extract all of this information and have it populate any other system of your choice, whether it's an accounting software, a CRM, an ERP, or just a spreadsheet. And you can do this just by yourself, by watching those tutorials and trial and error. But if you want to cut the adoption and learning curve, then you can schedule a consultation, the link just down below, with me or one of my team members. During the call, we will review your current process and suggest the best implementation setup for your unique needs. But if you want to do it yourself, absolutely fine, but I would recommend you download our DocuSign Mastery Cheat Sheet because it will help you understand the foundations of DocuSign and how to automate your workflow in the right way. Now, let's go back to the actual tutorial and let me show you how you can validate a range. So this is a share purchase agreement where employees have the option to buy primary and secondary shares within the company they work at. And so what we want to do here is we want to make sure that the number of shares that they enter when they sign the document falls between the range of shares that they are allowed to purchase. There is the minimum and there is a maximum and the number they should enter should fall within that range. And so for that, we are able to use a formula field that checks that the number they enter falls within that range and then if that's not the case it shows them an error message let me show you exactly how it works first so that you can understand the concept and then i will show you how we've set up the actual formula that allows this process to function so now just filling out the form field as if i were an employee if you haven't seen that screen before it's probably because you have not got access to docusign document generation and DocuSign document generation is an add-on that allows you to create mail merge documents. And mail merge documents are word-based templates that allow you to create documents that look very polished. If you want to learn how to create mail merge documents and templates, you can watch my video on how to use mail merge templates. But for now, I've just generated my document. I'm still acting as the sender. I have not sent document for signature yet. The only thing I want to do is to make sure that I enter the maximum number of shares in this box here for the primary shares. And in this one, the number of maximum secondary shares. And again, if I'm pre-filling the document actually right now manually, but you can automate all of this using an API integration. 
And so if you want to learn how to pre-fill documents using automation, you can watch my video on how to pre-fill documents using automation. But for now, just for the purpose of demo, let's just assume that I've sent the document to the signer and I'm now acting as the employee. So if I choose no, then nothing happens. I can just click on finish because I don't want to buy any shares. But if I choose yes, then I have a box that shows up. And the way this works is with DocuSign conditional logic. So if this is true, then show that. If this is not true, then hide that. If you want to learn more about how conditional logic works, I've also got a video on that. But now let's focus on how the system is built. So right now the employee is asked to enter the number of shares that they want to purchase for the primary share. And so we can see that the minimum is 10 and the maximum is 188. And so if I enter nine, my error message here remains. But if I enter 10, then it goes away. So I can go ahead and click on finish. Now you can see the number of maximum shares here because I've decided to make it visible for the purpose of this demo. So if I enter 189, the error message disappears as well. But if I do 190, then the message appears. And so in real life, this number will be hidden. It will not show to the recipient. And then this is the result of the formula. So the way it works is with docus and formula fields, if you create a statement in your formula, which means you're saying this equals that, it will tell you whether it's true or false. If it's false, it will give you a zero. If it's true, it will give you a one. And so based on the result of that formula, then we are able to say, well, if the result of the formula is zero, which means it's not true, then show the error message. But if the result of the formula is one, like it would be the case if I were to enter something like 50 because it's between 10 and 189, then the statement is true, which means we can hide the error message. And the same thing applies here. So here we have a validation between 10 and 300. So if I do 250, my message will disappear. But if I do nine, then it will be less than the minimum. So it will appear. And if I do above 300, so 301, the message remains. And so it's exactly the same logic. Now let me bring you back inside of that template so you understand exactly how this was built. So the first thing we've done, obviously, we've named our field. So this is the number of requested shares, the primary requested shares. And so we labeled it correctly. Same thing here, number of requested shares, secondary. And once we've done that, we've made sure that the validation is numbers, of course. We also created a field for the maximum number of primary shares allowed since the maximum is a variable, but the minimum is always 10. It obviously always depends on your actual use case. Every business is different. But in our case, we have a field which is called number of maximum primary shares. And we have another one which is called number of maximum secondary shares. And in our formula, what we're saying is that the number of requested shares, so the number of primary shares the employee is entering in the field, must be under or equal to the number of primary shares that's allowed. And at the same time, that number should also be greater or equal to 10 because 10 is the minimum number. And so that formula is going to return either a one or a zero as I showed you before. And then on top of that, we've added a conditional logic that says that if the result of this formula field is zero, then we show this error message. And what's really cool about this error message is that we can make it sticky, which means the employee is not gonna be able to just see the error message and not do anything about it because until the error message disappears, they can't go past it. So this is how you validate a range. Now, let me show you how you can validate that the entry that your recipients add in field actually equals or total to the number you want. In this specific example here, the insurance participant can elect multiple beneficiaries. And so they can also allocate a percentage amount to each beneficiary. But we want to make sure that the total percentage amount between all beneficiaries equals to 100. And so this is exactly the same logic as the one that I showed you before. We have this field here, which is called benef B1 benefit percentage. Then we have this one, B2 benefit percentage, B3, and then B4. And so we're using this formula field here to check whether adding those different fields 
equals to 100. Even if that's not the case, then we display an error message telling them that the benefit percentage must add up to 100%. So it's exactly the same logic, but just for a different use case. Now, what I wanna show you is how to calculate dates, which is really interesting if you're using lease agreements. So let me just show you the document first so that you understand when your tenants are entering a new lease, they enter during the month at some point, and so because of that, the first month, they will have to pay you a pro rata of what the actual monthly rate should be. And so in this case, the first thing we want to collect really is the commencement date. And so the commencement date is going to be the baseline for us to build a formula that's going to calculate how many days are in this current month, then what should be the daily rate, and then how many days does that person need to pay us for that first month. And so now let me show you how this works. So we've got a couple of formulas here. I'm not gonna go over all of those. Let's pretend that this field here was just a text field with a monthly flat fee, right? So let's just say it's 3000. Then what we're doing is that we are checking using this formula, the number of days in the month of the commencement date. And so for this, you can use a formula that checks a text field or date signs field as well. But in our case, it's a commencement date. And then we want to find out the daily rate. And to find out the daily rate, we simply divide the monthly rate by the number of days in the current month. That's going to give us a number. And so that number is something we're going to be able to multiply by the number of days that the tenant is supposed to pay. But we first need to find out how many days that tenant is supposed to pay for the first month. And so we're just doing days in first month minus the commencement date. So here we're just calculating the number of days remaining from the commencement date until the end of the month. And we are multiplying this by the daily rate, which is what the tenant owes. Let me just show you a demo so that you will see how easy it is. It sounds very complicated, but once it's set up correctly, it can save you so much time. So my commencement date is the 16th of April. The monthly rent is $3,621, so that's what we have here. And so then the number of days in that first month, month of April, we have 30 days. If we divide 360.21 by 30, we get a daily rate of $120.70. And then if we calculate the number of days left between the commencement date and the end of the month, then it's 15 days. And 15 days times 120 is, is this amount. And this is the amount owed by the tenant in their first month. So this is how powerful docus and formulas are. If you need any help with setting up your template integrations or formulas, you can use the link in the description of this video to book a strategy session with one of our DocuSign automation consultants. During the call, we'll review what you're trying to achieve and provide you with the best implementation roadmap for your unique needs. I will see you in the next video. And until then, happy signing. Ciao.